Hey guys, today we're gonna to discuss something that might just be a little controversial. So I am sorry if it is controversial, it could be controversial in the homeschool community as well as public school people or I don't really know. I'm just giving my opinion though. And I can't change, well I could change my opinion. People can change their opinion. Um, I have been blessed by um, learning this throughout the years and I just want to share it with you guys. I've shared a little bit before about unschooling and that type of stuff, but this is why I do not do school at home. I know, I know, I know, I know. All right, so I am kind of prefacing this as far as this is why I personally, why my family does not do school at home. Um, we do not do school at home. For many reasons and I'm going to share those today. So I am also going to share tidbits of different things that we do do throughout this video so that you can see other learning opportunities. So I think in a lot of these homeschooling groups I'm always seeing new homeschoolers come on and saying hey um, I want to homeschool what curriculum should I buy? And most people are like, oh, buy this one, buy this one, buy this one. And I'm like, no, don't buy any curriculum. And it sounds totally contradictory to what our society tells us, that we have to have a curriculum in order to learn. I want you to understand first, as far as um, what is required state-wise, every state is different, but you have to change the word in your mind from um, if it says, this many hours of schooling is required or this subject is required as a school lesson subject is that you need to learn in this area, that you are required to learn math, you are required to learn English, whatever it is that your state requires. It's asking you to teach those things that they are learnable to your child. It is not saying that you have to have a curriculum for that subject most of the time. I don't know all states, so I cannot speak for all states, but everything that I have seen is about what is um, learned, not that you have to have a specific curriculum. If there is a state that you have to have curriculum, um, put it down in the comments below, but make sure that you know what you're talking about before you do that. Please check on Homeschool Legal Defense Association site or whatever site that you think is appropriate where it specifically states that it must be curriculum. Um, that said, there's a lot of options on how to learn something without using a curriculum. I mean, I am 45 years old and I still learn all the time. I decide if I want to learn about something new and I seek it out and I learn about it. Um, I think that I want to raise children that want to learn, not children who need to be, I feel need to be taught what they need to be taught at that time that they need to be taught it. Um, I trust that children from the ages of zero to five before they start school that they are learning, like they learned how to crawl, right? Nobody taught them how to crawl. It's innately in us to learn. And I think many homeschoolers lose out on the opportunities that are out there to learn because they're so focused on not getting their curriculum done. And I think it's to their fault because there's so much to be learned and so much that can be benefited in your children if they are, um, sorry, somebody's going in and out. I'm in the cabin and I have a fire here and I just have somebody coming in out so I had to keep an eye on that for a minute. Um, that all learning is important. So all learning is important to your children. Skills learned are important to your children. Aw, good job, thank you. Okay, when it goes down a little bit, you can put one in if you want. For instance, skills learned. Learning how to build a fire, that's a skill. Do they teach that in public school? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> that would be a negative. Um, so I think all the skills are just as important, if not more important, than reading, writing, and arithmetic. 
not saying that reading and writing and arithmetic are not important because they are important but there's so many ways to learn those things and there's so many other things that can be learned so I think it's a real disservice to our children not to teach things like sewing, canning, gardening, what food is, what is in their food. Do they realize that they're eating chemicals? Like, I think that we should be teaching them and allowing them to make some of those choices themselves. Like, these are, this is why we, for us, I say this is why we eat this food because. And then we show them the difference of why we eat this food and what's actually in real food versus synthetic food or wannabe food. Um, so the interesting thing is, is the other day I was reading the average homeschool person spends, family, spends between $500 and $1,500 per year per student on curriculum. Wow. What if we change that over that a money amount over to an amount that we spent on giving our children learning opportunities? I mean, we could take our kids on like a whale watch. We could buy them museum memberships that's probably good thank you we could buy them museum memberships or go to an art museum or go to the zoo we could we could go all year long to a zoo for less than five hundred dollars how many learning opportunities would be there would it be better for a student would a student retain information better if they were there and they were looking at a zebra and able to see like how a zebra is behaving or if they're forced to memorize some random facts. It's really up for like each family to decide what is what. Um, what about tech? I know some people say, well, you know, if you, if you don't teach your kids all these techie things, then they're never going to learn it. I don't really agree with that. Um, I actually recently was listening to a podcast and then I also listened to a video and it was talking about how um, how bad tech can be for the brains, especially when it's interactive tech like video games or like learning apps and that type of stuff can really be bad for the brains because it's keeping the brain on hyper focus all the time when your brain actually needs to go back a little bit in order to learn what is happening. So I'm not saying that it's entirely bad. I'm just saying that our focus probably shouldn't be on tech and tech like stuff. And if your child grows up and they decide that they want to like do more of this or do more of that, then go for it. But you know, five year olds, eight year olds don't need to be on tech 24 seven. My kids, they like their math program, which is teaching textbooks mainly because it is the only thing that they are allowed to do on tech. I, we don't have video games. We don't have video games, like seriously. I know that sounds probably really weird to a lot of you, but we don't have video games. We don't have um, like interactive tech on a regular basis. We listen to podcasts sometimes in the vehicle to and from, but people don't have like their individual um, tech. Although I, this company called Hindersound just sent me this thing, which I found really interesting. It kind of like goes over their ears and they could listen like independently, which is really an interesting type thing, but I wouldn't allow it 24 seven. Our jobs as parents, especially in the early years, is we want to nurture the children's creativity and their critical thinking. And a lot of times they can be doing that just in play itself. Also by being out in nature can help develop those things. So now that I've talked about what I don't do, um, let's talk a little bit about different ways that you what would this look like in a family? Okay, one, that is going to be being available to give the tools the child needs to the child. So being being available to give the tools to the child. That might be that you are available to help your child 
learning to read. That might be your child wants to learn about this and you help them to learn how to find those resources. That might be um, this child want, is really, really into this. Let's find an apprenticeship program for this child. That might be this child wants to learn about this. Hey, that sounds really fun. Let's do it as a family. Um, <coughs> so it looked different in all different types of scenarios. What it doesn't mean is shutting down and being like, oh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I think a lot of times that happens when they're, you know, around three years old, they're asking, well, how does this happen? And why does that happen? And whatever. And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. And we're just like blindly answering our children when really we should be like really answering them. Well, I don't know, but let's look that up. And they're going to learn so much out of that. So that's the first one is being available. The second one is showing experiences to your children that will spark imagine, imagination and creativity. So bringing them places or maybe starting a science project or um, maybe... <laughs> Sorry about that. So just showing, showing a child the experiences is the next tip for that. Um, a lot of times that means going someplace. Um, ask them questions about, this, about stuff and why they think that way. So if you see that something might intrigue them or see that they're working on a project, just being like, oh, hey, what are you making there? Oh, that's kind of cool. How'd you come up with that idea? Like just engaging with the child rather than telling them you are going to build this, giving them different tools to do whatever so that they can build or do how they want to do it. The other day somebody said, what's the best toys for a five-year-old boy? And I was like, uh, a hammer, a nail, and scrap wood. <laughs> Um, but really, seriously, like they are going to learn to build physically, but they also can just learn so much. And I think that we just need to be better about listening to our children and seeing where their interest is sparked rather than telling them that they have to do this at this time. Does it really matter if they learn about a giraffe when they're five or when they're eight and they're really interested? It really does matter because if they're interested then they're gonna wanna suck it right in. Um, we sometimes watch little like animal educational type videos and or read a story about an animal or whatever and sometimes they'll pick up on this. One child recently is super fascinated with um, walruses and polar bears. And so we go to the library and yes, I allow my children to pick out five of the same polar bear book because they want to learn about that thing right then and that's okay I was in the city the other day and this lady was like she had this stack of books like this big and so the librarian was like so are you um are you going to be going to New York City and she's like I have no clue but my son is all excited and wants to study all about New York City and we're just going to learn and find out about it and then we'll make a decision and a budget if that's how it's going to be and that's so true like just doing that and then sometimes it's like hey I want to take my kids here because I want to go to this place and let them learn it doesn't have to be a scheduled okay you have to do this lesson and then we have to go visit this place it can be like hey let's go visit this, this place and learn while we're there okay so let's see asking them questions was the third one so being available showing child experiences um, asking them questions and then the last one that i'm going to discuss is getting out in nature um, there's actually been a lot of studies about this so if your child is learning something for them to be out in nature and free play in nature actually allows what they've been learning to make it into a different part of their brain so that they can retain that information. Um, and so the studies that I was reading was actually talking about like how recess out of the schools is actually bad for the kids' um, brains and that type of stuff. But it was a really interesting article. 
but um, allowing your children to get out in nature and not being afraid also to learn God's creation in nature. You know, like my kids could sit there with a science book and learn all about a pond and frogs and algae and all that type of stuff. Or we could sit out at a pond and learn all about those things and then things that we don't know, make a note about and get a book about it. And they learn so much better doing that than reading it when I'm requiring them to do it. And I know this because I spent years homeschooling with a curriculum or with a couple of different curriculums. I went from a Becca to, I'm trying to think all the curriculums we did. Oh my goodness, it was a while ago. Somebody was always giving us a Becca curriculum, so we used quite a bit. Oh, switched on Schoolhouse. We did switch on Schoolhouse for a little bit. And it was just like a headache, a headache. Um, basically, what I do is I do um, teaching textbooks, math, and they can do as much as they want that day. They do a lot or a little bit. I might be like, hey, did you do your math today? And they might be like, oh no, I should go do that. Or they might be like, oh, I just really don't feel like doing it today. Or yeah, I just did like three lessons. Um, it really just depends on them. They usually end up finishing the program before the times up like you're given a year to finish the program and they usually are already like halfway through another program so i'm not worried about them not getting enough math um that said we also do so much math hands on we do tons of cooking last night you know i was doing a video for amazon um my amazon haul and i had my daughter i was like hey can you add these numbers up um all those types of things are real life experiences um we're weighing stuff out for sourdough bread we're building stuff in an addition they know how to build they know how to measure they know how to use a tape measure they know all these skills because they're doing them right so Developing children who can think, not just be dictated to. Okay, so what about all the paperwork end of homeschooling this way? Um, there are, this is the question that I get asked a lot. There are so many ways um, to do this. So you can document by doing like a learning journal and writing things down. Um, that you're doing. Um, you can take pictures of what you were doing. You could take pictures and make a photo book. I did that before and send that in with the curriculum type stuff. Too. Um, pictures, make lists of field trips. Maybe the kids want to color a picture about their field trip. Um, list all the books that you read out loud. Um, list all your audiobooks, listen the podcast you listen to. What I found the best for us and our family is I get a calendar with either really big blocks or like really big sections. And then for each day, I write what we do each day on it. So say it was a day that we went to the city and we listened to a bunch of audiobooks or a bunch of podcasts. I'm going to write all those podcasts down on that. Um, if the kids do math, we're going to write math and then write their name. And my oldest daughter, she also helps me log this because I tend to forget. Um, and she's really good at that. She's like right on it. So those are ways that you can do that. Um, also the teacher who does my evaluation, she is on my social media accounts. So she also can see all the things that we are doing on a regular basis. She sees like all the field trips we go on. Um, I used to actually make photo books for her and send them in like as a scrapbook at the end of the year. And then, but now she can just see, now that social media is so popular, she can see all the places that we're going and doing and all that type of stuff um, from there. And she realizes the educational benefits from those things. So I think that is it. So that is why I do not do school at home because I want to just watch my kids learn. I want my kids to enjoy learning. I want to take advantage of all the opportunities that are given to our family on a regular basis, whether that's like an outside activity that I want to take my kids to or a learning center or whatever I want to do like I want my kids to have all those opportunities so many times around this area there's quite a few homeschoolers but nobody wants to do anything because they're so focused on like well I might not get my curriculum done um and they put the sole focus on that 
but that's not what it's about. Your children should be learning. A school workbook is not the only way that they can learn. And I think the socialization piece comes in too in those types of scenarios because then your kids are being out more often and out with various ages. Like socialization is just kind of odd. Like how do your kids get socialized? Um, they go out. Um, but kids are able to, in life, do you only have friends that are like the same age as you? No, like why do kids have to only have kids their same age in order to socialize? So to take your kids and bring them out into different events and different things that are going on, then they're getting socialized in those types of events as well. So I encourage you to, even if you decide not to homeschool in this way, listen to John Gatto's book, Dumbing Us Down is a good book. Um, and research a little bit of unschooling and then maybe spend two months even during the summertime in de-schooling which is doing nothing and just watching the way your child learns and you're going to learn so much from your child i think the biggest benefit of all of this is that you're able to grow relationships with your children like you've never thought before so i hope this video blesses you and i hope it answers some of the questions that are being asked out there and i hope you all have a blessed day and stay tuned i'm going to show clips of different ways that we learn at the end of this video um just little things from different places because that's real life that's how they're learning on a day-to-day -day basis so stay tuned for that You made it. Good job. 